Hello hockey fans, Oddman Rush here and welcome back to another video. Over the last couple of weekends, I've asked you guys to provide me your thoughts on certain players within the National Hockey League with regards to whether they are overrated in the league or whether they are underrated compared to their contemporaries. This weekend, I thought we'd change things up just a little bit and instead of focusing on the players themselves, I want to highlight the jerseys that they wear as I asked you guys to tell me what you think the worst jersey in NHL history is and why. And you guys gave me a bunch of different responses, a variety of jerseys from across the NHL and throughout its history as well, some of which I do agree with and some of which maybe not so much. So let's take a look at the ones that you showed me and see what I think, shall we? First up, we have a tweet from Brady Puss to Chuck on Twitter, who shows the St. Louis Blues jersey with the trumpets on it during the 90s. Now, I've got the jersey up on my screen right now, and I've got to be honest, it's an interesting jersey, isn't it? It definitely screams 90s NHL. I feel like there's going to be a couple of jerseys that come up in this video where they are very clearly a part of their time, aren't they? They're very much a product of their generation, a product of their time, and looking back on them two, three decades later they do not hold up very well. And I do think the St. Louis Blues one, this one with the trumpets, is a prime example of that. Obviously, it's got the St. Louis Blues colours on it. The blue, obviously, being a note, uh, is their logo with the St. Louis Blues. So you can see why the St. Louis Blues may have taken this route. But there's just so much going on in this jersey. The three trumpets there, all the different music notes coming off it. I mean, I have no idea where they put the Captain C on this jersey or, or any lettering on the jersey. But it's really difficult to make out, I would imagine, compared to everything else that's going on on the jersey. I don't have a look at the back of it right now, I'll be perfectly honest, but judging by this colour scheme and the way that it's done, it doesn't look very nice. Obviously, they've used more of the yellow to kind of accent between the red and the blue and, and go in a little bit between the trumpet. But it also does look like the trumpets kind of have a face in them and they're winking at you. And I'm not really sure how I feel about that. It's got the St. Louis Blues like original logo or their more, more commonly known logo on the shoulders, which you would expect, of course. So that's great. But at the same time, yeah, there's just so much going on here. It doesn't look like a hockey jersey, like an NHL jersey. It looks more like an ECHL or an AHL jersey when they do those themed nights for things like Star Wars night and things like that. It just doesn't scream St. Louis Blues. It doesn't really scream National Hockey League. Obviously, a lot of the kind of more common NHL jerseys are very clean. They're very straight to the point. This one just screams, let's put more on it and people will like it. And I've got to be honest, I agree, it's not a very good one. I, I think this is a poor jersey. I'm glad that the Blues don't use this now. I'm glad that they didn't use it for more than a season or two because it's a bit of an eyesore. I think the yellow combined with the blue makes you want to vomit a little bit. And obviously you've got the red on there and red... Red, yellow, and blue can look okay when combined in the right ways, and this definitely isn't the right way. So, yeah, you made a good choice with this one. This jersey is ugly. Next up, we have Adam Smale on Twitter who says, The Red Wings reverse retro. It's effing disgusting. Now, when I first saw this jersey, I probably would have agreed with you. When I first saw it, and especially compared to the Chicago Blackhawks reverse retro as well, they're both very similar in the kind of style they're going for, using, obviously, their retro roots back in the early days of the NHL. And when I first saw this one, I thought, oh, I'm not too sure I like this jersey. But having seen it on the ice with the Red Wings and as time's gone on and I've seen more of it, I've got to be honest, I actually quite like this jersey. Those of you who've watched my channel for a while will know that I'm a sucker for those kind of historical references to jerseys and teams. Obviously, the Pittsburgh Penguins Winter Classic jersey this year was a prime example of that. And using that kind of Detroit Cougars influence from the 1920s, 1930s in this jersey, going for more of a, you know, old school jersey jersey with the stripes and the and the name because obviously they didn't have ways to make it more advanced or have proper team logos and stuff on it like that I think this is a really nice jersey. It's pretty clean, i got to be honest. I think also with the uh, retro NHL logo on the crest as well, I think is really cool. That's obviously a reverse retro feature for all of them. But yeah, this jersey's definitely grown on me as time has gone on. And I don't think I agree that this jersey's bad anymore. I can see why people wouldn't like this jersey. Because at first, it is a bit of an eyesore. It takes a little while to get used to, I think. But at the same time, I love the roots that it's coming from. I love the inspiration behind it. And I love the fact that they've just kind of gone back to basics with it. They've gone, look, we have a vast, lengthy history of this hockey organization or hockey in Michigan, in Detroit, within the National Hockey League. Let's pull on some of those roots instead of just reusing a jersey from a couple of years ago or a decade ago, you know? Of course, the Detroit Red Wings haven't really changed their primary logo since joining the NHL. Obviously, they had that D beforehand that was used in 
in a winter classic jersey during the mid 2010s but other than that it's been the winged wheel for pretty much their the entirety of their existence so they don't really have any other alternate primary logos to be able to pull from throughout their history so the fact that they've gone really really old school with the with the kind of red jersey black striping and then detroit in white i, I quite like it like i said it did take me a little while to get used to but i do really like this jersey now having seen it on the ice i think it's a nice jersey so gonna have to disagree with you there but i can understand definitely why you don't like this one moving on to dylan shiro who says the nashville predators lazy cat jersey during the early 2000s now i assume that you mean the mustard jersey from the nashville predators dylan and if that is the one that you are thinking of the one i've got behind me of course yeah, this one is an interesting jersey, to say the least. I think the logo is okay. The logo's fine. Obviously got that saber-tooth tiger, the Nashville Predators. Yep, that makes sense. That's perfect. But the color of the jersey? Ooh, yeah, there's something about yellow jerseys in the National Hockey League that doesn't sit right with me at all. There's something about yellow on jerseys in general that's just a bit of an eyesore. Obviously, there's a difference between mustard yellow or yellow in general and gold. Gold is perfect for jerseys. We've seen it with the Pittsburgh Penguins. We've seen it with the Boston Bruins. So obviously gold is perfect, but... Uh, yeah, it's something about that mustard yellow color that really puts me off and it definitely screams uh, 90s, early 2000s, doesn't it? Where they're trying to stand out from the crowd, especially the National Predators coming in as an expansion franchise as well. They're really wanting to stand out and show themselves as kind of the new kids on the block. Unfortunately, sometimes the new kids on the block get picked on for being slightly different and not looking necessarily the same to everybody else. And I feel like that might be an instance here with this jersey. It's just not very nice. It's a product of its time, very similar to that St. Louis Blues jersey we were looking at earlier. And all in all, I'm glad that they left this one in the 90s and early 2000s because, goodness, it is an ugly jersey. Now we have Twisted Rista Hockey on Twitter. Oh, hey, Nick. How's it going, man? Thanks for your tweet. Much appreciated. Go and check out Twisted Rista Hockey on YouTube if you guys haven't done so already, who says, I know plenty endearingly love it, but for me, it's the Vancouver Canucks Flying V. I know that we got the skate logo from that, but the Flying V looks nothing like a hockey jersey, or for that matter, a sports jersey. Worst NHL rebrand ever. Now, I've got to be honest, guys. I agree with Nick here. This jersey is not very good, and I agree that it does not look like a hockey jersey at all. All. Whether it's the primarily yellow slash gold jersey with the black and the red, or whether it's the predominantly black one then with the red and the gold accents, both of them do not look like hockey jerseys. And yes, I know Canucks fans that you have a lot of good memories with this jersey. There were some good times had with this jersey. Obviously got you the skate logo later on and those jerseys are beautiful. But at the same time, this is an example of a growing pain that you shouldn't have shown to the public. There's certain things, there's certain ways that you develop, whether it be as a person, as a hockey team, as a franchise, as an organization, as an identity, there's certain parts of that that you don't need to show everyone. And this was a perfect example of that, you know? We Obviously, you're trying to push the boat out, do something a little bit different. Sometimes doing things differently isn't a good idea and it's wrong and you should never do it. And this is one of them. I don't think it's the worst jersey that's ever been made in NHL history, but in terms of a rebrand for an organization, yeah, you can't really get much worse than this. This jersey is not very nice. It does not hold up today. I'll be perfectly honest, it didn't really hold up at the time either. I bet a bunch of the players using it kind of questioned it. There's no logo on the front. You don't even know which team you're playing for. You know how always that they say you play for the logo on the front, not the name and the number on the back? Well, there's no logo to play for, so all you can play for is the person on the back. And no wonder, because the Vancouver Canucks didn't win anything in this time either. So, yeah, this jersey is not very good. It's very ugly. It's definitely one of the worst in NHL history. I don't necessarily think it is the worst, but yeah, this is not a good rebrand, not a good jersey, and I'm glad that it was left when it was created because it is a ungodly sight. Next, we have Goza18 who says the New Jersey Devils current alternate jersey. And the award for the laziest jersey goes to the New Jersey Devils. My God, is this jersey terrible. Just looking at it right now, obviously they've gone with a very simple kind of less is more design here, obviously with the black with the white stripes around it. Then you got jersey written in the middle, obviously meaning New Jersey, but obviously writing jersey on a jersey. Obviously that produced a bunch of memes where people were writing hat on hat or t-shirt on t-shirt, you know? It's, it's so lazy. Of all the things they could have come up with for an alternate jersey, they chose to go with something that's pretty much plain and then just jersey written on the middle. Guys, really? How big is your marketing department? How big is it? Because if it's one guy, I'd understand. But if you've got a whole team of marketing people there or, or designers and people trying to 
push the brand of the New Jersey Devils, a new era of Devils hockey where they're no longer playoff misses. They're going to they're gonna make their way back to the playoffs and try and relive their glory days of the early 2000s. You give them a jersey like this, I know it's an alternate jersey. I know that they're not going to wear it that much compared to some of their other jerseys, but at the same time, really, guys? I will say that I am a bit of a sucker for a black jersey because they contrast obviously really well with the bright white of the ice that they play on. So when the teams are actually wearing black jerseys, they can actually really pop compared to some of the other colors that, that teams use for their jerseys. But at the same time, like I've said already, this jersey's just lazy. There's no color anywhere except for highlighting the jersey written on the front. Just a bit of red there. The New Jersey Devils have always been red. Red is the way of the New Jersey Devils. Obviously, the red being where the, the white stripes are around the jersey doesn't really work, and it would make it look very, very cartoonish. But at the same time, you guys have a abundance of history to go through. You have a bunch of different relocations to look through. The Colorado Rockies. I know you've done stuff like that for your reverse retros as well, but just don't use an alternate. If this is the best you can come up with for an alternate jersey, just don't make one. Just use the red and green jerseys like you always do, the Christmas style that the New Jersey Devils use. You don't have to go and use something like this. I guess it's an acquired taste. I, I can see why some people might like it, because it's very straight to the point. It's very clean, very, you know, what you see is exactly what you get, but it was memed on rightfully so because it looks ridiculous compared to other NHL jerseys around the league. Devils, you gotta do better next time. Pick up your game, okay? On to Rob Adler on Twitter who says, that yellow Bruins jersey from 2006, blindingly bright. Ah, the Pooh Bear jersey. Some Bruins fans love it, others hate it, and the rest of the NHL wonders why this thing was made in the first place. Like I've said with some of the previous jerseys we've looked at, yellow on a jersey never usually works very well. And obviously the Bruins always been known for black and gold. They decide to go for something a little bit more yellow this time and it just doesn't work out once again. I think the logo is nice. I just don't understand the relevance to the Boston Bruins. Obviously there is relevance within the Bruins organization within Massachusetts and the kind of Boston area. But at the same time, it does kind of look like a Pooh Bear, like Winnie the Pooh, you know? So it's kind of a cartoony logo. It screams mid-2000s, which obviously this was when this jersey was used, but there was a reason it was only used for one or two seasons, because nobody liked it. And chances are, nobody bought it because they thought it looked ridiculous. Nobody liked it, and I, I highly doubt the players even liked wearing this one, just because it it's so bright, it's so in your face. And yes, I get that you want to stand out from the competition and say, you know, you're the Boston Bruins, you've been around for 70 years at that point. You want to you wanna rebrand, you want to see if you can take take your organization into the new millennium. First of all, this was 2006, so you were about half a decade late on that whole new millennium stuff. And at the same time, it isn't menacing. It doesn't, doesn't show the big bad Boston Bruins, does it? The Bruins with the circle with the B in the middle is iconic. It's, it's linked to that franchise forever, and they've done various different styles, various different formats of that logo for the last hundred years or so. So obviously you associate that logo with that jersey and with that organization. So any rebrand is going to be different difficult from the get-go anyway, but then throwing a poo bear on the front of the jersey and going, we're the Boston Bruins, guys. And not even that, the, the shoulders just has Bruins written on it. It doesn't even have the Boston Bruins logo, so people that aren't really familiar with the Boston Bruins might have no idea what this jersey is or what it represents. Yes, it has the black and gold, but it's more black and yellow this time, and people will be wondering, what jersey is this? So yes, there's nothing wrong with having a rebrand of your organization and your logo and trying to take things in the next direction but you've also got to have enough familiarity with your previous logo and with previous things within your organization and with your style to let people know that it's the same organization, it's the same franchise, it's the same product, and it's the same team. And there's a reason why this jersey wasn't used for more than a season, because they went straight back to their iconic B logo, because that is the iconic Boston Bruins logo. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just ask the Montreal Canadiens. Now we have payrise 2 cents who says the Mutarist jersey honestly still baffles me. Now looking behind me at this jersey, if you aren't aware with which which team wore this jersey, I just want you to take a moment to wonder, which team in the National Hockey League wore this jersey during regular season games? Did you guess the Dallas Stars? No? Because it's not obvious, is it? When have the Dallas Stars ever used red on a jersey other than this Mutarist jersey? 
They've never done it, they didn't do it before, and because of this, they didn't do it after, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I've got to be honest with Rai here, this jersey is not very nice at all. It does not scream Dallas Stars. I don't really understand what this jersey's going for here. It's got black, green, gold, and red on it, which... I'm sure they could find a way to make that work. I'm sure other teams and other jerseys, whether it be within the NHL or within other sports, have managed to make that combination work. But with this one, it does not work at all. You've got plain black across the chest and then the little logo. The logo is very small in the middle of the jersey, I've noticed. Maybe that's the size of the jersey that I'm looking at. And then you've got that red kind of star that goes past it. I get that they're trying to show that's the Dallas Star and the Dallas Stars organization because the star is very similar to a star that they've used in other sense with the kind of gold, black, and green. But where is that red coming from? Is it like a blood red sky going on here? Is it like the apocalypse? Because I, I don't understand this. I don't understand why they thought this was a good idea. But once again, this is an example of a jersey during the 90s, early 2000s that, you know, it's a product of its time. It's very difficult to find a lot of these jerseys during these times and go, these were the worst one in the National Hockey League because... Obviously, we're not in the 90s anymore. Three decades ago, this kind of stuff was in style. And yes, it hasn't stood the test of time. But at the same time, I don't think you can take marks off for it still being a jersey that, whilst it looks terrible now, at the time, yeah, maybe it wasn't the best jersey on the market still. But it did kind of fit in with the rest of the NHL jerseys and with re the rest of kind of fashion around the time as well. This one, maybe not so much compared to some of the other ones. Maybe more so that Mustard Preds jersey, of course. But yeah, I think it's a good thing, once again, that this jersey remained in the time frame that it was created. It has not stood the test of time. The logo itself is okay. I think it's fine. If they used more Dallas Stars-related colors, maybe the green that they use now on their jerseys could be a nice addition to it instead of that red. Or maybe using white on that to show the kind of star flying through the sky. I assume that's around Texas or around a moose. But yeah, it, it doesn't really work very well. I'm glad that it was left where it was in the NHL's history books and the Dallas Stars history books. I'm glad that they moved on because, once again, major eyesore. We have Eric Zarens on Twitter who says, Hands down, the 90s Islanders jersey with the ugly fisherman. Now, I noticed that there were many people both on Twitter and on my YouTube community tab post who all mentioned this jersey. And having looked at it right now, I can completely agree with you. This jersey is not very nice at all. Not only are the colours not really working and the logo does not make any sense whatsoever, but the thought process behind this jersey and the success that the team had during the time they wore this jersey all in all just make this absolutely awful. You have the New York Islanders, a dynasty team during the early 1980s, won four consecutive Stanley Cups. They have that wonderful, clean, perfect logo with Long Island in the background. It looks beautiful. They still use that logo to this day for that very reason. They didn't need to change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right guys? And then they decide during the early 90s to come out with a fisherman on their logo or somebody that looks like a fisherman with a hockey stick and a net behind him. Because not only is it a hockey net, if he's a fisherman, he's using a fishing net to catch fish, right guys? Get it? It's a double meaning. The jersey's ugly, Islanders. Why did you make this one in the first place? Obviously, you've got the yellow influence, that kind of maroon blue that the Islanders have been known for forever. But adding the white and the light blue in there as well just does not make the jersey pop anymore. And it doesn't make any sense, especially because it's towards the bottom of the jersey and the arms as well. It just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb and makes... Makes you kind of question the rest of the jersey. You kind of see that to begin with and go, oh, that doesn't look very nice. And then the more you look into the jersey, you go, oh, the rest of it doesn't fit together either. Of course, they have used the Fisherman logo for the Islanders reverse retro this season. And they have very much played into the so bad it's good or so bad it's funny kind of angle. But I think I speak for most fans, both watching this video and in the NHL in general, who go... It's so bad, it's terrible. It, it's not like a meme thing. It's not like a great thing. It's not like a, haha, that's so bad, we like it. No, no, we don't like it, Islanders. We don't like this one at all. Leave it in the 90s. Let it be gone. Let it rest. It needs its peace, okay? Penultimately, we have Gordy Parento, who says, The Mighty Ducks Wild Wing jersey. That was just awful. I've got to agree with you here, Gordy. I think this jersey, just like many of the other jerseys we've looked at so far in this video, is a product of its time. There's a reason it was made then, it wasn't used after then, and it's been left to the history books then too. This jersey, it screams late 90s, early 2000s. And I don't know if this jersey was made as a result of the animated TV show that Disney made about the Mighty Ducks and Wild Wing, or whether the show 
was made as a result of this jersey being made but whichever one it was it doesn't work it was a terrible decision now obviously the ducks have used this logo for one of their recent reverse retros and that was quite popular unlike the fisherman jersey with the islanders this one has kind of gained the so bad it is kind of good and it's kind of unique and we do like it but at the same time wild wing is wearing the normal mighty ducks of anaheim jersey the white one with them with the duck in it just use that one. I know you used that one at the time, but that jersey's perfect. You should have never changed that in the first place anyway. Obviously, the Ducks were, were sold by Disney and they could no longer use it, but still, that jersey was perfect. Why not do something related to that? I, I, there's just something about this jersey. It screams one of those ECHL, AHL theme nights. You know, like cartoon night in the AHL and they wear a jersey like this. It screams that. Obviously, these types of jerseys were probably the inspiration for that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I, I get what they're going for. The, the colors are very much on brand. The colors work perfectly. It's more the logo on the front. It just doesn't work. Uh, yes, it's a product of its time. Yes, kids and and kind of young adults might enjoy this kind of style and it, and i will agree that it does kind of have that so bad and so unique that it does kind of work and is kind of interesting but other than the fact that it's an interesting jersey i don't want to see it on the ice being used and i don't really want to buy it so is does that make it a good jersey maybe and i'm sure some of you disagree with me and will say it's a good jersey and you're you're more than welcome to disagree with me i think all the factors that go into a jersey whether it be the color scheme that they use the logo that they have on the front the references and the history that they reference of their organization and all the little nods to their history throughout the years which is an important factor especially for the older franchises and and how they look on the ice when the players are using them because that is a big factor in it as well you do see the players using it do have a hand in whether this jersey is a good jersey or whether any jersey is a good jersey and i think the fact that they probably looked really ridiculous wearing these in regular season nhl hockey games just goes to show you that it doesn't really hold up and it wasn't a good jersey obviously there are fans of this jersey and i can understand why you like it especially since it does follow the color scheme of the mighty ducks at the time very very uh, truthfully and that works perfectly for this jersey for me it's primarily the logo on it it just doesn't work it's far too cartoony it's far too childish it doesn't work for a national hockey league franchise but but maybe that's just me right now last and most definitely least we have gothic adam who says the los angeles kings burger king jersey colors used badly the fades the diagonal stripes and that awful logo just all around terrible i'm gonna say it folks the burger king jersey is the worst jersey in the history of the national hockey league just look at this jersey behind me does that look like an nhl regular season jersey to you no because it shouldn't have been, should it? It looks more like a football or a soccer jersey, right? You know, you have the logo in the top left of the jersey. You have a color scheme down the middle. Maybe a sponsor written in the middle of the jersey. And you have, you know, the name on the back and the numbers on the arms and everything like that. It doesn't look like a hockey jersey. And I think what adds insult to injury with this one is the fact that they have the beautiful LA Kings logo on the the shoulders to show that beautiful like 90s 80s 90s kings logo which is beautiful and still looks great to this very day and to add even further insult to injury the greatest player in the history of the league the guy who with this organization broke the goals record for the most goals ever scored in nhl history wayne gretzky had to wear this jersey for a season there was a part of a season from january towards the end of the year of 1996 Wayne Gretzky, the great one, was forced to wear this jersey in a number of regular season games. How disrespectful to the Kings and Wayne Gretzky, the greatest hockey player ever, had to wear this abomination, not once, but on multiple occasions for the Kings organization. Is there any further way to make this jersey look disgusting? Ew, I hate it. And with the with the gradient color, with the black from the shoulder down to the kind of the grayish white down the other side, and ugh, it just looks ugly. And you've got that pink there on the beard of the of the Burger King. The the crown looks nice, I guess. That's probably the only the one kind of thing that I like about it. But everything about it just screams disgusting. Ugh, it makes me want to vomit. Get it away from me. 
And on that rather sickening note, I think I'll end today's video here. That was a look at the worst jerseys in NHL history. What do you guys think about the jerseys that we looked at, as well as the opinions that I expressed on each one of them? Do you agree with what I have to say? Do you completely disagree? Or can we meet somewhere in the middle? Like I always say with these videos, these are purely my opinion. You do not have to agree with everything that I say, but hopefully there's some things that we agree on and some of the things that we disagree on. That's the fun of making these types of videos, right? Also, I do want to say a big thank you to you guys for coming back to my channel week in, week out. Thank you for, for checking out my videos, even though I've been a little bit slower on the uploads recently. Uh, the reason for that is because I started a new job this last week and it's been very intense It's been very busy and I haven't had as much time to put stuff together So thank you for the support. It really does help me out a lot. Whatever your thoughts are on this video Let me know in the comments below I do want to hear what you guys have to say if you have another video idea for this type of thing Whether it be the best jerseys in NHL history or any other topic whatsoever Do let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say, but thank you very much for watching guys I do hope you have enjoyed please feel free to like subscribe share or watch some of my other videos Thank you very much for for watching and goodbye. A big thank you to Bexy93, Burned Retinas, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.